like uh, Now Foods went out uh, earlier this year and tested all the creatine gummies and publicized the results. Ridiculous. Half of them had zero creatine. The rest had five, six percent creatine in those gummies. Wow. Just terrible. And I can go back in time and, you know, give three examples of three of the big, big protein company brands out there. They got caught cheating. You know, since we're in the business, we'll see some sort of isolate, say protein, which is definitely going to be one of the more expensive. And it's like five pounds of this product for like five bucks a pound. I mean, when you do the math and we're thinking, wait a minute, we can't even as a manufacturer get some of these ingredients at that price. So they're doing, there's only so many things you can logically conclude. A big, big national brand out there that we do a couple of their products. They brought a couple more products to us to look at. Oh, yeah. All of the flavors, the serving size was the same across the board. So we went and analyzed all the vitamins because it was an electrolyte mix and half the stuff wasn't in there. There was stuff that we found like ascorbic acid that wasn't on the label. Yes, I, I've asked him, he's told me through the years how many people have called or said, hey, I need X product made for this price. Can you help me out with that? Or can you do it in this way, which is they're basically asking him to cheat mm -hmm. and he's turned around. I mean, it's just not worth having that business to make a dollar when you're literally being asked to cheat. You go to a, a third party and you're going to spend on a single ingredient, you know, 300, 400, 500 dollars. And it's going to take you, you know, four to six weeks to get an analysis back. Wow. You've already bought the product from the manufacturer. It's sitting in your warehouse. You're selling it. You now get a low purity. What are you going to do? All right, so I'm back with Dr. Jeff and Brian Andrews from EFX Sports, or also you can say All American Pharmaceuticals, but maybe they'll straighten out those business logistics here in a second. We're going to cover all things that I want to at least get into, which is basically in the realm of supplementation, things such as can we trust what's on the label, what's really happening kind of behind the scenes. Uh, Brian and Dr. Jeff have been in the industry a long time. They've seen many things. Uh, they put their company, EFX Sports, one of the biggest things is the integrity, what's in the labels, what you see. Uh, all sorts of just testing, making sure what's in there is in there. Uh, so I really want to kind of get down into things maybe we don't know about. This is not meant to be a big promotional thing. I said in the channel before, I like EFX primarily because I got to know Brian and Dr. Jeff, and I've used their supplements for years since I was a kid. But really, it's just I also find they have a level of integrity. They'll speak their mind on what's going on. Uh, so, of course, they got their own brand pushing. But at the end of the day, they also, I think, are trying to do their best to make sure they're putting out quality supplements and avoiding mm -hmm. things that... We hear of horror stories in the supplement industry so that's just a general primer so uh dr jeff we'll just start with you kind of general intro to who you are people that know you and by the way i'll link all inter interviews to do with you guys down below in the description box too so yeah dr jeff galini um ceo and executive scientist at all american pharmaceutical we are the the mother manufacturing company you know efx sports uh, contract manufacturing, and then of course our brands. Uh, we specialize in powders, liquid capsules. We also have on-site uh, testing facility where we do a lot of third-party testing for other manufacturers that don't do what we do. But I have been in the industry since about 1983 or so. So been around a long time. All right, awesome. All right, Brian. Yeah, I'm Brian Andrews, the president of I'm the president of EFX Sports. Been working out using supplements since I was 16, a few 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 days ago. And then uh, we started EFX Sports in 2005. So we're getting ready to hit 20 years at that. And uh, Jeff and I actually started working together back in 2003, I believe it was. Okay. So between the two of us, we've we've got a lot of years of experience, seen a lot, still a lot to learn, but yeah, we've we've seen and done a lot. Okay. And I started with before we hit record, I, I assume from the consumer side, and this was kind of naive of me because I before I got this interview together, I'm like, is this still happening? Maybe it's not worth even doing an interview like this or just kind of an expose or so to speak, because I kind of assume at least if you're going to like your name brand store, a Costco, whatever, a GNC vitamin shop, that what's in there is more or less safe. Maybe you don't trust the fly by night websites, whatever, maybe even Amazon's might be safe to make the cut on there. But how true is just that statement alone that just the the average supplement for the consumer going in their drugstore or whatever is most of that stuff safe or any kind of big things that we should watch out for i'll just start with that yeah be aware i mean whenever the cost of living goes up prices go up 
companies start cheating. And again, we have seen it over and over and over again over the last, you know, 30 some years. And right now, you know, protein is back to cheating. Creatine is back to cheating. You know, there's a difference between being safe and then being, uh, you know, cheating or cutting to get costs down. You know, is the safety factor still going on? Absolutely. Especially with all these fly by night online brands, there are still people adulterating with drugs. You know, um, the SARMs fake, peptides fake. Um, either they got drugs or they have nothing in them. And they all come from China. Um, now, you know, there are some good things that come from China, but there is a lot of junk that comes out of China. Um, as I said, when costs are going up, like right now, protein is at a, a scarcity, you know, supply and demand, the price is double. People start cheating again. And, and I'm seeing it where, you know, 50, 40% of label claim, you know, they're adding maltodextrin. You know, the smarter ones will try to uh, nitrogen spike it. They'll still add, you know, maltodextrin and then they'll spike it with some uh, amino acids so that the typical analysis method for protein is just to run a Kydel, you know, a nitrogen. Oh, nitrogen's there. Therefore, it must be, you know, pure weight. Um, but Brian can kind of jump in. But it, it, it continues to go on. Herbal spiking, uh, you know, to get caffeine contents up, they're adding caffeine. Um, you know, I was the one years and years ago when ephedra was uh, legal, uh, they were spiking with ephedra and HCL. And I mean, I used to get threatened by suppliers, by the Chinese, because I kept figuring out what they were doing. And I probably was the one that led to it being banned because we reported all our data to the FDA because people were, you know, having heart attacks and stuff, thinking they were taking a natural product. But in fact, they were taking something that was spiked with a drug. And, you know, today's day and age where 65 to 70 percent of Americans are on some type of prescription medication, the last thing you want to do is to use a dietary supplement that has been adulterated either on purpose or by, you know, cross contamination with some pharmaceutical drug. Brian, I'll have you touch on that, but maybe if uh, you can hit on this with your answer, Brian, too, or Dr. Jeff, come back to it. But Maybe we can stay in one of those two things, like you threw out the protein and creatine example about how we're seeing those kind of same tricks come up again. How is that? I guess, how do we know that's happening? Not to call you out, Dr. Jeff, but I mean, or what are those tricks that we're kind of seeing a little more specifically? Yeah, so, so again, you got to look at the creatine market. You know, since I introduced it to the marketplace way back in the 90s, um, you know, it was pure. What is happening today is with the reintroduction through all these young social media yahoos, um, they are making creatine popular again. And everybody on Amazon and online is trying to have the best price. So over the last two years, I mean, costs have come down 100 percent on creatine. Now, I know all of the, the creatine manufacturers. I know all of the places to get the intermediates from. And we keep an eye on things every day. I'll get an email from supplier, you know, trying to sell us, you know, 500 kilos of creatine at some ridiculous price. You look at just the analysis, they're high in contaminants. And some of the products that we did test just for fun, uh, they've been spiked. Uh, well, not spiked, but cut to get the cost down. So, again, you know, you got to be aware the only place that I always say that, you know, consumers can trust is brands that have been around for a while, you know, like our brand. I mean, you know, we've, we've been doing this for a long time and we're not the only brand. There's brands like Optimum that have been around for a long time, but they're in distribution. You know, they've proven themselves where most of the online brands, you don't even know where they come from, you know, what's behind them. And there's a reason why things are cheaper than everybody else. So I see it firsthand, you know, because we do test a lot of products for customers that, you know, want us to knock something off or just suppliers sending in things, you know, we'll just evaluate it because I'm always curious on, you know, how some of these companies can be send it, selling, you know, two kilos out there for $20. Okay. Awesome. Brian, you want to hit on that? Yeah, yeah, he's exactly right. I mean, we've all done it. We've walked through a big box store and I mean, especially, you know, since we're in the business, we'll see some sort of isolate, say protein, which is definitely going to be one of the more expensive. And it's like five pounds of this product for, 
like five bucks a pound. I mean, when you do the math and we're thinking, wait a minute, we can't even as a manufacturer get some of these ingredients at that price. So they're doing, there's only so many things you can logically conclude. They're just doing it for just marketing, just to get, you know, their product out there and to, you know, buy customers, so to speak, which is, is that's ethical. That's fine. Or, I mean, but the thing is you can't do that long-term. You've got to make money as a business. I mean, that's just economics 101. And you just wonder sometimes like, how in the world are they selling and making money at some of the prices that are below our cost? And like Jeff said, he knows every and anybody in the country, let alone worldwide, where we can source ingredients from. And pretty much most people are getting a lot of these from the same places. And that's, that's just kind of the rub. You just sit there and scratch your head going, how in the world are they doing it? And one thing Jeff will tell you, you know, let him speak to this is I, I've asked him, he's told me through the years, how many people have called or said, Hey, I need X product made for this price. Can you help me out with that? Or can you do it in this way? Which is they're basically asking him to cheat mm -hmm. and he's turned it away. I mean, it's just not worth having that business to make a dollar when you're literally being asked to cheat. And sometimes they'll do it straight out and sometimes they'll try to hide it with, uh, you know, can you give me this percent protein? And then he'll turn around and ask him, well, wait a minute, when you're going to put this on the label, what are you going to claim there? Oh, it'll, it'll be a whey protein at 80% or something where they've asked for it to be cut with maltodextrin down to say 60%. And you, look, from a logistical standpoint, and I mean, you guys can share more or less how this works and maybe, or don't comment on it, but I know that I'm assuming, I'm limited to no no idea how this works but i assume when there's like dairy plants in wisconsin like to say with you guys like from your whey protein how does your company go about say sourcing and getting whey protein could you address that or is that something like you guys can handle? Uh, no. Uh, no i mean you know whey protein is a byproduct of cheese um there is you know uh, one company out of uh illinois or not illinois uh, idaho that you know can make it from milk but it's a little more expensive you know it all started as you know, the cheese manufacturers used to throw that way out and years and years ago. Um, I don't know who the first one was. I was up at the top, but it was probably Dan Duchesne with, uh, what was the name of that protein, Brian? Um, what do you think? Designer Way. Designer Way? I, designer Way. You know, I think he was kind of really the guy to start to get these cheese manufacturers to dry that. So there's only so many manufacturers in the USA, and I know them all. Now, what they do do sometimes is they'll have protein that's below spec, meaning the protein is low, maybe the ash is off, the pH, the lactose is high, and they do offer that at a discounted rate. Um, so we do see that, and that's perfectly legit, you know, maybe in the food industry where they're using it as a filler, but if you don't up it, then you're cheating. But in our industry, you know, people are going out and buying that, uh, that product. But where the rubber really meets the road is, you know, again, like Brian said, right now, you know, you can't even find any WPC. None of the manufacturers are making any. Uh, they're claiming everything from nobody's eating cheese to it's all being sold overseas. We have none. Um, and again, this is just a trend that comes and goes every two, three years. And then, you know, next year they'll have an abundance and the price will come down. But when the price comes up, and these companies that have built their business on protein, they can't go out there and, you know, double their price and be selling a, a whey protein isolate or a concentrate for 80 or $90. So what do they do? They cut it. They hope that they don't get caught. And I can go back in time and, you know, give three examples of three of the big, big protein company brands out there. They got caught cheating in the early 90s, and that's how they built their names. I'm not going to mention them because I don't want to get scared. But um, so basically, all... I, I could start Mike Supplements, and we all pretty much, say in the United States alone, I just start a company, and this is what most people do: is they would go to one of these manufacturers, distributors, a manufacturer like us. Okay, and then I get my way, and then I can kind of, I can put whatever I want in the label, essentially at that point. Yeah, I mean, if you come to me, no, because again, you know, we're we're going to be up and up on it. But there are some smaller manufacturers that are flying under the radar. FDA doesn't even know they exist; they're not registered. And you go to them and say, "Oh, you know, I, I need a I need a whey, a whey protein isolate for fifteen dollars, where just the protein alone is going to cost right now twenty five dollars for two pounds." And they'll go, "Oh yeah, we can give it to you," and you know. You make a label and you say you got 30 grams of protein, where really you got 10. Yeah. Now, who's going to notice the difference? 
And quite a few years ago, you know, when, when the costs were up again before COVID, you know, the consensus through the female fitness industry was don't use whey because you're, you'll gain weight from it. And what they were gaining weight is because it was being cut with maltodextrin. So they're thinking they're on a no carb diet, yet they're getting, you know, 150 calories of carbohydrates from maltodextrin. No wonder they were all getting fat and uh, they weren't able to, to diet properly. I mean, and that was probably 60, 70 percent of uh, women out there were experiencing that. And how about just the idea of let's just going with the idea of trans, let's, let's just say I hear these companies well, from FDA approved facility and they got some set of USP stamp or any of those other stamps of approval. Can we just go by that as like, well, this is OK and just go off of that? Or is there ways around getting those stamps of approval? No, nah, there. First of all, the FDA doesn't approve anybody. It's a pass fail. If you are FDA inspected, then you should be able to get their FDA number and basically a copy from the FDA. They'll, they'll give us when they inspect a 480 saying that, that we have been inspected. Now, when it comes to dairy, we're a USDA certified facility. We're probably one of just a few uh, companies in the US that have that. So I can actually give you our USDA number. You can go look it up to see that we're inspected for dairy products. You know, we meet all the standards of the USDA, which kind of is the dairy uh, arm of the FDA. Um, but all these other, you know, GMP and CGMP and, you know, NSF, I mean, most of that is a bunch of rubbish. Um, NSF is just pay, you pay and they'll give you the logo. Um, when you get into NPA, um, or the, the um, uh, informed sport and things. Okay, these are a little more legit, but they don't govern what you do. I mean, they're, they're kind of taking a, an overview uh, that maybe you're producing it right, but most of the brands out there are coming to some manufacturer. So, you know, a lot of them are just saying USP, um, which again, doesn't mean much. Um, okay. If you don't know where the product is being made and who the manufacturer is um, and be able to get some documentation from them, then again, you're shooting in the dark. And you probably know, I mean, today's consumer is less educated than he or she was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you had to do a little research. Now, whatever, you know, John Brown influencer says, I'm just going to listen to him or her, you know, they must know what they're talking about. They got 50,000 followers. So there's so much misinformation out there and misguidance that um, people well, don't even, and I they don't care. I have they a story like literally yesterday, someone I know close to me, I was at a family party and they, I won't say what they got the supplement, but it was for their kids. And they searched this supplement and they just found it on the website and it was some that claim to do something with kids growth or something like that. I don't want to say too much already, but when I go on the website, I mean, they tell these claims that again, I'm thinking about like, it's just, I mean, this, it was expensive. It wasn't cheap. Point was they, they invest this emotional response to something. that was just some basic stuff, really uh, spending a lot of money, let alone, again, you don't really know what's even in there from some, uh, yeah. some unheard of company, but. Well, you know, I've, I've been an athlete my whole life and, you know, we, we have heard as Brian can tell you so many of these young, I just call them yahoos, you know, oh, just buy the cheapest creatine out there. It's all the same. And I would never have gone on the football field with a cheap helmet. Right, I yeah. would never have a, a cheap weightlifting belt or, you know, some tool that you needed. When I was bodybuilding, I didn't go to the dollar store and buy my protein. I mean, you buy the best, but you need to do your research to make sure what you're buying what you're using, whether it's protective gear, you know, food, supplements, that, you know, it is it is the best of the best, you know, to just buy the cheapest stuff out there. Well, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You're not going to get the results. Uh, Brian, you want to speak to any of that stuff? Because I, yeah, I was just going to say something that's important again. And it, it, this is one of those things where obviously we're, we're a brand. So we come across, I'm sure people think, oh, well, they're biased, but I'm just trying to tell you that there are definitely some other really phenomenal brands that do great work. It's always, you know, they say it's a few bad apples that ruin it for everybody. And you, you made the point of, oh, suppose I want to start Mike's protein or whatever your brand could be. 
at the end of the day, you're at the, you're at the mercy of your manufacturer. They can tell you whatever you want. They can give you C of A's, which are certificates of analysis that they tested all this protein. I personally know a guy who I think it was about 10 or 15 years ago, did exactly what you did. He wanted to start his own little brand. He got the labels. Six months later, he got sued in a class action lawsuit because his stuff got tested and it was like 50% of the label claim. And so that's just what can happen. So these guys that are out there, like he said, these influencers that have started their own brand. It might be fantastic. It might be legit. I'm just saying they're going by the word of their manufacturer. They don't truly have a way themselves to know unless they want to pay a lot of money to have it third party tested and that sort of thing. So it's just, again, it's something to be wary of. And we know it doesn't do any good to make us say look better because we're downplaying other people's businesses. That's not our intent at all. This is just more of educational and what you do you know, with your reviews is just to give what we would like to think is solid education on what we do, because we only know what we do. I, I can't tell you for a fact what company X in Utah or wherever, what they do as a manufacturer. I just know what we do, and I, but I do know this. It's usually above and beyond what most other people are doing, which is gonna make our stuff more expensive. And you know, something I learned uh, in business, a quote was given to me and I never forgot, especially when it applies to marketing, is that price is only important when there's nothing else to consider. You see this week in, week out with the reviews you do. You know, you can find the cheapest possible squat rack. They're out there, the cheapest leg press, whatever. But then there's these machines that are a hundred times the price of that one you maybe could get on Amazon. There's a reason for that. It's not just a pure profit motive. It's the steel it's made from. It's all these things that you want to consider. And a guy like you that does reviews is going to point all that out. So you kind of know what you're getting when you invest. And again, we say this is your body. It's your life. You only have one life to live. There's only so much time. If you're going to invest this much effort into the, the work that you're doing in the gym or however you train, don't you want the best fuel to go with that and not just strictly again, and there's nothing else to consider. Just go for the absolute rock bottom price. And we see this all the time on the Instagram. These guys are selling a ton of creatine or whatever, and they all come back and say the same thing. Just buy the cheapest. It's all the same. And we're trying to tell you it absolutely is not all the same. If it was, why aren't they the biggest brand in the world if everyone only cares about price? And like Brian said, he doesn't know what all the other manufacturers are doing, but we do because on our contract side, you know, when somebody wants us to price a product, I will make them send in a bottle because my question is, nine out of 10 times, do you want me to price what's in the bottle or what's on the label? Because it doesn't meet label claim. And some of these are, are big companies out there. Um, and as Brian said, you know, testing is very expensive. I mean, yes. it's no test. I mean, you go to a, a third party and you're gonna spend on a single ingredient, you know, 300, 400, $500, and it's gonna take you, you know, four to six weeks to get an analysis back You've already bought the product from the manufacturer. It's sitting in your warehouse. You're selling it. You now get a low purity. What are you going to do? You know, you're stuck. So you just buried under the table. And uh, I mean, just I was just telling Brian uh, just the other day, a big, big national brand out there that we do a couple of the products. They brought a couple more products to us to look at. Oh, yeah. All of the flavors, the serving size was the same across the board. So we went and analyzed all the vitamins because it was an electrolyte mix and half the stuff wasn't in there. There was stuff that we found like ascorbic acid that wasn't on the label. And if you go by the serving size being all the same, just for what was in there, it was about 70% of the label claim. We I go back. Ask about, I don't know if it's the one brand I'm thinking of. I, I, I want to say, well, there's a famous it. electrolyte blend that I think is very popular. My, yeah, but yeah, and it came out recently that it was something like that. Basically, yeah, not meeting label claims. It had zero sugar. Or uh, and, you know, we, we go back to the the brand, and of course, you know, they don't want to hear, and then they disappear because you know, again, they wanted that ten dollar price, and if I price the label, it's going to cost me twenty two dollars. If I price what's in the bottle, I can sell it to you for ten. You know. I so don't want to say too much on this part, but I do want to ask because people might be wondering. Because if I have the question, you'll be asking. What is that situation you're talking about again? Because I'm just lost in the like how you guys work. So uh, how does a big brand then come to you? What are you doing for them again? So as a contract manufacturer, you know, uh, step aside the EFX Sports, uh, we produce products for other people. Basically, we're making their product, putting their label on it, shipping it to them, 
or shipping it to their Amazon warehouses or shipping it to GNC, wherever. So in order to price a product, you know, they could give us a label, but I like to see an actual product because I've been doing this long enough that we'll price the label and they'll come back and tell us we're too expensive. But if I get the product and I actually run some analysis on some of the ingredients to find out if they're in there or if they meet label claim, then I can come back and say, well, you know, do you want me to price what's in the bottle or what's on the label? You know, what do you mean? Well, your bottle doesn't need label claim. I mean, so I, I'm not going to price it for you because I'm going to be too high. You're not getting what you're asking for. And we yeah. see that probably 50% of the time. And what do you think those companies, I guess you don't know, with those companies, if they leave you, what do you think they're doing? Would they go to, you think? Oh, they're going to go there go back to where they are to get their $10 product and they're going to go sell it. You know, they kind of turn the blinders, you know, they talk about, Oh, you know, we need quality and Oh, we're all about this. But at the end of the day, you know, they don't want to have a, a more expensive product because they know other people are cheating. So they just hope that they're not going to get caught. And, you know, sometimes it'll go a couple years without the government testing or some, you know, third party like uh, now foods, went out uh, earlier this year and tested all the creatine gummies and publicized the results. Ridiculous. Half of them had zero creatine. The rest had five, 6% creatine in those gummies. Wow. Just terrible. So, you know, some of that will come to play uh, other times, you know, over the years there, uh, there was a big list of all the proteins. Um, a third party company went out and tested all the proteins on the market and not one met label claim, even, you know, even Glambia, you know, Optimum was, you know, 96% a claim. Well, then, you know, what the big deal? Well, how about you pull up to the gas pump at three <laughs> a gallon and it says, oh, yeah, by the way, um, it's 90% gas. We put 10% water in there. You'd be feeling you got ripped off, <laughs> you know? Wow. Are there some supplements that are safer than others? I, I would assume like when it gets to like herbs or pills, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess is there maybe powder is better than pills or like is there herbs, herbs like where, where's the area like that's a gray area that's like that's just the area that's like the danger zone. That You got to be careful. Herbs, absolutely. Because anytime somebody is promoting, you know, we have this male testosterone product that, you know, works better than a steroid, probably it's spiked. Now, the government did kind of crack down on pro hormones, but, you know, with COVID, uh, they got rid of a lot of uh, FDA agents. Uh, you know, the Biden administration was supposed to bring a bunch back, but they never did. So you got to be careful with, you know, any products that make claims, but things that that are drug related, like the um, um, the SARMs came in and SARMs are not legal. They're, they're not even they're still experimental. So the SARMs I saw were all fake, um, or some of them was actually testosterone cypionate. 100% were coming out of China. And, you know, they've got some of the crookedest people out there selling you whatever. You know, one email, they're selling you a whole list of anabolic steroids. And then on that list, oh, we got SARMs. And the new thing is the peptides. Biggest scam out there, you know. But again, people are following these, these folks. But again, be aware of pre-workouts that claim, you know, all these ingredients, amphetamines that you've never heard of and herbal products from brands that you, you, you know, you don't know who they are. You know, you take a brand like Now Foods who have been around for a long time. And I know those guys, they're actually one of our licenses uh, for Crealkland. You know, I personally would trust to use anything from their brand, but I wouldn't just try to find the cheapest vitamin C or vitamin E on Amazon, because more than likely it's rubbish, it's garbage, it doesn't need label claim. But anyhow, that's the things you gotta be real careful of, especially if you're on some medication, you need to find a brand that is certified drug-free. And those are few and far between. And I don't mean just somebody's claim, but I mean an informed sport, you know, and people go, oh, well, that's only for sport. No, it's not, you know, if you are taking some blood pressure medication or cholesterol medication and you buy some dietary supplement that's adulterated with a drug, your adverse reaction could kill you. I mean, 
So that just sounds surprising to me. I think if I heard that, like I think in form sport, when I see that, I'm like, oh, it's nice. You you paid the extra yeah. mile to like get a you know third party thing. But I guess I would be I'm kind of shocked to hear that that's so much of an issue of like literally finding yeah. drugs. I thought I thought that would be a very small percentage or something. No, it still goes on, and you know. If you're a, an athlete, you know, a collegiate athlete or pres- professional athlete that's drug tested, they tell you not to use any products that aren't informed sport tested. You know, um, if you're law enforcement, any anybody that drug tests. But even though, you know, from a sports brand, you know, we're concerned about that, you know, out from a medical side, I'm more concerned about the average person who uses supplements that is probably on, like I said, some medication. I mean... Brian, you want to get any of that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you mentioned Amazon. So in the past, what has it been, past year, year and a half, they've really cracked down on brands. They're 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 demanding a much higher level of testing, uh, a couple of categories they've all but removed. And if you are somebody who's been buying stuff off there and all of a sudden maybe one of your brands you've been buying from disappeared, that's why. Because the level of testing is incredibly expensive compared to what it was. And some of these fly-by-night guys just couldn't, they just could not compete and pay for those extra tests to have a product on there and have it certified. And then I was just thinking back to, you know, talking about some of the tricks of the trade. One of the things that was very prevalent, probably 10 years ago, maybe uh, we talked about DMAA, which was the uh, it, it's basically closely related on a molecular level to ephedra. Ephedra ruled this industry many years ago. It was just an incredible compound, but it ended up getting banned. So they came up with a metabolite of it called DMAA. You just change a couple of the molecular structures, and it had this very similar, it's a stimulant, very, very powerful. Well, there's something called hot batching a lot of companies used to do, and that would be, especially with a pre-workout, you would basically make your first two or three runs of it with all the extra goodies in there, even some possibly, you know, under the radar or illegal stuff to gain that huge market share. And then you start cleaning it out and people might take the same product later on and go, wow, this doesn't feel the same, but you've kind of got them as a customer and you've got your, you know, you've got that market penetration. And I can think of one in particular, these guys ended up on the news. Um, There was a product, I think it was called Driven. And Jeff was asked to test that product. I mean, people were taking this stuff and they were raving like, I just have never felt this way. What is this stuff? I remember Jeff, you're one of your chemists went in there and found two two designer methamphetamines that you couldn't detect normally, but his equipment could. And they found them and turned that into the FDA. And those guys ended up basically they're gone. I mean, I think the owner either got sued into oblivion or even did some jail time over it. How about stuff like heavy metals? I guess other than drugs, I mean, how much of a risk? That's something else that concerns me is yeah. just contamination of products. Is that, I guess, does that still fall in line with the testing you would normally do or a company you yeah. might want to do? So, so then, you know, that kind of goes into another category of things, you know, where you talk about the safety, you know, spiking and all this other stuff is just, you know, efficacy. But now we talk about safety. The FDA does not require heavy metal testing. So it, it doesn't have to be done. The FDA does not require microbial testing. Doesn't have to be done. Um, I guess, you know, being an athlete, for me, I always want to do the best in whatever I did. And when I retired from, you know, bodybuilding and I got into business and chemistry, uh, you know, what we do here for testing is so far above and beyond, which is why we do so many testings for other companies, even big companies like Lonza, um, you know, their UC2. I mean, you know, we, we still continue to do a lot of their testing. But, yeah, you got to be concerned about heavy metals because, A lot of the stuff coming out of China, their groundwater is contaminated. Where do herbs, you know, where do proteins come from? You know, well, they come from cows. Yeah, but what are the cows eating? They're either being fed GMO grains or, you know, they could be out grazing. So, you know, heavy metals aren't going to kill you. But over time, if you are ingesting a lot of lead or cadmium or arsenic, yeah, you're going to have some health issues. Where the bigger concern is, is the microbial contamination. You know, we're seeing this in the food industry. There's been a lot of recalls for salmonella. Um, The dietary supplement industry, they have a lot of recalls, just like the baby, the infant products. And there's no reason why those big companies that make infant products should ever have any kind of contamination. But, you know, just talking about like whey protein, 
Um, one of the tests that we do is what's called total plate count. This is the total amount of aerobic bacteria in the product. The USDA standard for like milk is 30,000 CFUs per gram. So they consider that to be safe. We will not release a protein powder that has more than 1,000 CFUs per gram. Everything's gonna have a, a little bit of microbial um, when it comes to dairy and such. Where the industry standard, again, we'll see, you know, 100,000 will be on C of A's where people are trying to send, uh, sell that. Now, again, that isn't gonna kill you, but you know, you wonder why people have gut issues. You wonder why, you know, all of these uh, intolerances all of a sudden, I think a lot of it is, is from the microbial. You get high amounts of yeast and mold, you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have health issues, um, allergies and such. Uh, let it known if you got E. coli or coliform. I mean, those, those pathogens will kill you. So again, companies that don't test, they're just taking their word from their manufacturers. And most of our C of A's, if not all of them are from our suppliers, always say, this is a copy of our manufacturer because most of them, um, you, you can't deal directly with a vitamin C manufacturer. You have to buy from brokers. Um, that's just kind of the way they work in this industry. So again, if, if your manufacturer isn't testing for heavy metals or doing full microbial, man, you just don't know what you're getting. That's where we're going to run into some safety issues. Well, I think still the disconnect might be for the consumers when you're saying, well, like if your company isn't testing or if you're uh, in a distributor or manufacturer into testing, I think the general person just sees, look, I see the name and the label. Maybe it has a little badge there of Authent yeah. like authenticity of what's there in their brain that thinks of not knowing the logistical side. Okay. This is a company X that has a plant of some sort and they're going to do all these things versus it's coming from some other third source. And I, that I think people are just totally lost in. Like, I think you guys are a rare company where you can, you actually control the, the manufacturing process to a certain extent, if I'm right on that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, anything else, I think just that you think the general public is maybe at a loss end or just any other, I don't know, shocking things you think you most people aren't, aren't aware I'm of? I'm just going to go back and, and, you know, say to, you know, young buyers, you know, be aware. Don't buy the cheapest stuff out there. It is not all the same. And if you are following somebody who says that, quit following them. They don't know what they're talking about, you know. I mean, quality is important. You know, the higher the quality of food, the higher the quality of training, the higher the quality of supplements, the more you're going to get out of it. You know, I have heard over the last 20 years, oh, I'm a, I'm a non-creatine responder. There is no such thing as a non-creatine responder. Your body produces creatine. You have no creatine. You cease to exist. So there's no such thing as a non-creatine responder. You're buying cheap creatine that doesn't work. That's what the issue is. So again, you know, do a little homework, you know, find brands that are legitimate, that, you know, have legitimate uh, testing behind them. Like I said, if you're concerned about drugs and form sport, that's the only uh, testing that I will back. I don't back the NSF because it, it's a, I won't even get into it. It's not very good testing. Nobody is monitoring them. Where informed sport is accredited, meaning somebody is monitoring their testing. Um, and the U.S. Olympic you know, Committee relies on it. NFL, NBA, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, same with, you know, uh, FDA. You know, if they say, oh, yeah, we're, we're FDA certified. No, you're not. There's no such thing. FDA don't stamp nothing. Let me have a little proof that your manufacturer is FDA inspected. And if they can't do that, if any customer came to us and said, hey, we need to prove that our products are being manufactured, you know, at an FDA inspected, go to the All-American Pharmaceutical website. We put it all out there for anybody to see. So EFX Sports customers can see, any of our contract customers can see all the certifications and all the, the uh, things that we have. So again, you can be confident that we're doing what we're doing. But at the end of the day, if you don't test, you're, you're still taking my word for it. How about, um, Brian, I don't want, I don't, if you have something to say, let me, let me know, but I, two other questions popped in my brain about, uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll, actually I'll start with you, Brian, anything follow up with that? Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I can reiterate 
what he said. Uh, it's quality is so downplayed in this industry simply because it's like you were saying, you see it on a label, you just assume if it's in this store, it has to be good. I mean, is it? I don't know. I mean, there, there's no way to really know. And I, I'll, I'll still say, like I've said in other times, your body is the best judge. You have to use a certain product and you, you can just tell. And we've had many, many people say, I've used your stuff. There's just something different about it. I don't know what it is. It just works really well. Well, I, I know why that is because it meets label claim. Yeah, and I know right. the testing level that Jeff puts all these, I mean, they're torture tested three times. We don't just do it one time. It's coming in into the facility. It's, everything is tested 100%. We'll even follow the standards on that, which just says, oh, you only have to uh, test. So think of a pallet with all these materials coming in. You only have to test one and prove that's good. And the rest are assumed to be good. We test everything 100 percent. I think I can During, see for, the, for the masses, most that? people are for the masses. Most people I could see probably are going like the cheapest route possible. But then there's sure, for sure a big demographic that's thinking, OK, quality means I'm paying more money and therefore I'm getting the quality, which we know that's not necessarily the case either. But is there the what I want to get into was the. Uh, the idea, the kind of like the delivery methods, but maybe even things like vitamins and minerals, things that I just assume, like when I have a multivitamin from a company that is formulated a certain way, I kind of just in my head just intuitive, like, I don't think everything that's on that label is totally accurate. I guess how accurate are just pills and maybe and or different delivery, like you said gummies, like I never really trust a gummy because I just feel like it wouldn't yeah. be consistent. Right. Gummies and liquids. Liquids, uh, RTDs are made at water factories they're governed by their local board of health there's no testing and i spoke to a lot of people out there when we were uh before we decided to make our own uh carbolin rtd i thought well let me go out there and see you know we can make it but because we have to follow fda ours is going to be more expensive no testing at all they don't do microbial nothing so the liquid industry is like the food industry you know nobody cares nobody checks um, yeah, you, then you get into, you know, vitamins and such, um, for us, you know, we will not accept anything that is less than 98% purity. Now you go, what does that mean? Well, if you're buying, you know, vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid, um, this company could be selling a 60%. Well, what's the other 40%? It's filler. You know, it's filler. Now, if I put that on the label, milligram for milligram, I'm going to be 60% short of label claim. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of that that goes on in the vitamin and the mineral. Uh, mineral, there's a lot of scams because people are just mixing different salts. They're actually not bonding those minerals. Um, and you would never know because, you know, a vitamin isn't typically something you take and feel. Right. Um, now, a good vitamin like the one that, that I produce free of exports you know, over the course of time, you do feel a lot better. You have more energy. Um, B vitamins are crucial for the absorption of your protein, carbs, and fats. So even if you're eating the best protein, carbs, and fats, and you're not absorbing it, you're wasting it. So that's why a multivitamin is, is really crucial. You know, it's bringing in those nutrients that your body doesn't produce. They have to be, get them externally. You don't have vitamin C. You're going to get scurvy you don't have enough of these bees, you're not going to absorb your proteins effectively. And again, you know, if you're an athlete or somebody active, you know, you want to make sure that absorption is key. So there is a lot of chemistry behind what goes into formulating products where, you know, I found over the last 20 years, you know, all these uh, online, you know, formulators, they just throw anything together. That doesn't mean your body's going to absorb it, you know, more is not better. Oh, we got five grams of citrulline. We got 10. Oh, our BCA is two to one to one. Oh, we got 12 one to one. I mean, yes, garbage. <laughs> I'm thinking also about, uh, I just popped right, popped in, popped right out. Someone asked you, oh, I'm sure you guys get this. And this is another concern where people are judging the quality of the supplements based on the natural or just the flavoring system alone. So can you guys speak to, and I can edit this out if you want to, but I saw yeah. on something people were concerned about, well, like the EFX capsules were purple and they don't want dyes in their stuff. So some people seem to be concerned about how, how much of a concern is there on sweeteners versus, I know it's a big selling point, like artificial sweeteners, how big a deal is that of a concern or even like dyes and stuff like that. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know 
are people are getting their information from. And that's what we bump into. In fact, I have an entire article. If you go to our website in the blog area, it's called Women with the Effect. It talks about sucralose. It's probably one of the yeah. most maligned ingredients in the marketplace right now. And you have to understand that the sugar industry ruled the world for the longest time. And then sucralose came out and was just gobbling up their market share because you could get the same effect for using one one hundredth. It's like 600 times sweeter than regular sugar. And so they actually started lobbying, trying to file lawsuits. I mean, you can go back in time and find a lot of this stuff saying it's, you know, it's chemical bleaches and all this stuff. What people forget is it's not so much how, what, what goes into products that, I mean, let me say it a different way. It's the process is important, but it's the end result. In other words, you know, in chemistry, you can mix two total poisons to get a regular thing like table salt. Mm -hmm. Creatine is made from sarcosine and cyanamide. You would never in your wildest dreams drink that stuff, but you can use synthetic creatine all day long and it has no issue. It's the clean, the cleanliness and what's taken away from that. People mm -hmm. talk about some of these things being made from petroleum, but everything that's bad about quote unquote petroleum is, is taken away. The biggest thing that people completely misunderstand is they're thinking there are grams and grams and grams of this stuff in there. I mean, stop and think about it. Water is toxic at a certain level. So you can, and I would never condone, say, smoking a cigarette, but you can literally smoke one cigarette today and it'll have zero effect. It's the 10,000 after that that are going to take your life from right. you. So any of these types of things that are quote unquote bad, you know, they say moderation. Uh, for example, you talked about the purple. To reach what would be considered the ADA, the acceptable daily allowance of a, say, Red 40 product, which is all over the news and all being maligned right now. You would have to take 3,000 capsules or crealcaline capsules a day to even hit that level. Who, who's even going to conceive of that? It's just not realistic. And the fact that you really want to go down the rabbit hole, I mean, I'm not saying these are bad, but if you have tattoos, I would do some very deep research on that. You should see what goes into those inks. And the newest research comes out about the cancers that pot potentially come from it. Again, I'm not maligning that industry. I'm just saying these are the same oh. people that come in. But I can't believe you would have this toxic product and they have this giant, you know, sleeve on their arm of, of ink. I'm like, you have no idea. If you would just do the research, you would see you're really worried about the wrong thing. And, and those are the ones that usually, again, they, they don't know what they're talking about. They, somebody says something and like Brian said, I, I did a show because I was tired of people, you know, talking about, Oh, your capsules are killing people. No, Crealcon has been one of the most counterfeited product over the last 20 years. And, the reason why I have those capsules is they're color coded. So nobody's going to knock off my purple capsules because they don't have the color combination. They're FD&C, meaning they're approved by the FDA for food, drug, and cosmetics. Does anybody ever go to the pharmacy and go, oh, I'm not taking that amoxicillin because it's in a green capsule? Or why is this, uh, you know, ibuprofen, why does it have a brown coating on it? No, they don't say anything to the drug industry, but then they'll come to us and say, oh, you're killing people. You know, uh, colors cause cancer. So, you know, getting back to sucralose, sucralose was one of the most safety tested items ever done. Over 100 safety tests were done before the FDA approved sucralose. You only have to provide one safety test for the FDA to approve. So, is sucralose safe? Absolutely. There is no data out there other than, you know, something, you know, from Bulgaria that, you know, somebody said somebody gave it to their cat. But like Brian said, you know, the sugar industry was the one that told everybody cholesterol was going to kill you, where now we know that they paid for all of that fake research. And sugar is the number one reason why people have a high cholesterol. It's not from, you know, meats, not from red meat. So again, you know, that diversion into sucralose is going to kill you. You know, FDNC color is going to kill you. Well, we provide alternatives. You know, we have some products that have some colors, but they've been that way since day one. And you just can't take them out because the people who understand they're such small amounts, you know, we can't change the look of that product. If you don't like the purple caps, I make a crealcaline and a veggie cap. Or you can buy the neutral powder. So again, we provide options to everybody. Um, you know, again, you might be vegan and go, oh, you know, you have bovine capsules. I also have veggie capsules. You know, so I, I provide people with alternatives because, you know, again, you know, everybody has their own opinion. I have things I wouldn't eat 
That doesn't mean it's not good, but that's just me personally. But I don't go out and push my views on everybody else telling, telling, you know, that if you don't do this, you're killing yourself, you know, yeah. and that's what these guys are doing, you know, and like Brian said, they're the same guys that are then going and buying a, you know, energy drink that's loaded with, you know, chemicals and preservatives, or they got their tattoos. And by the way, lead is in that ink. That's how they get it to stay. And when those tattoos start to fade, it doesn't fade in the sun. It goes into the bloodstream. So that's that's where people are having, you know, serious health issues. The little bit of stuff that you find in supplements is nothing like the colors and preservatives that the food industry uses. Yet nobody says anything about that. You know, we, we get scrutinized in our industry for everything. Dietary supplements is the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary, and then pharmaceutical. So we are regulated and, you know, all the people who are doing a good job, you know, we follow the regulations. As Brian said, there's always a few bad apples in every industry that are going to cheat. Uh, they're going to knock off Levi's. You know, they're going to, I just saw recently one of the, uh, um, the uh, bulletproof vests were knocked off by this Chinese company. And I saw a guy that got some and they were a little cheap airsoft vests and they represented them as, you know, nine mil, you know, I mean, so, so you're always going to have those cheaters out there, you know? So again, do a little homework. Don't just believe what you read on the internet because most of it is not true. And that's why I started out by saying today, people are less educated because they just believe what anybody says instead of doing their own research where years ago, when we were kids, you want to learn something, you looked it up in the encyclopedia. And when the internet first came, you could only find, you know, legitimate research. You could get into um, college libraries and you could find research books and you could do your own stuff. Now, you know, yeah. most of it, just somebody's opinion. At the end of the day, it's really all about perspective. So going back to what we were talking about, you said the capsule. So there is roughly one to three micrograms of that dye in it. So you got to understand a grain of rice is 58 and a half micrograms. Like one grain of rice. I said one to three. You would, I could put it on my finger. You wouldn't even see it. You wouldn't even know it's there. And somehow that's going to magically give you these cancers and do all these crazy things that people are just freaked out about. You said, mentioned sucrose. The number one thing we get is how come you can't make your carbolin, your protein, whatever, with stevia? Well, number one, it's not as natural as people think it is. That's a lot of marketing hooey and you can do the research. You can, I mean, fact check me right now all you want. I can tell you it's not what you think it is. And there's a big reason why a lot of companies do not use it because it's incredibly hard to formulate with, to get the same level of sweetness. You would just take it and be like, oh, what, what is this? You just can't put enough in there. The scoop would be this big to get it sweet enough. So you use something like sucralose, which at such a crazy small dose is going to have zero effect on you. It just will not matter. And I think that's the biggest point to it all. Yeah. So I thought I opened a can of worms with that one for sure. But that was, I think, because that's where it, it's funny because there's two sides of the story. They're not going to look into yeah. where the stuff's manufactured, but they're going to care about just is it artificially sweetened? Is there colors or dyes and stuff like that? But I think that we covered a lot of areas there. Unless there's anything else that I missed, I think that was awesome. Anything yeah. Else? I did want to say one thing because this happened before. So you may notice Dr. Jeff is wearing his schmocks and his uh, hairnet. He is actually in the facility, in the lab. And people say, well, why is he doing this? Trying to look like a doctor or some medical guy? And you have to understand that if you go to some facilities, when you go past their offices like ours and you go into the back, a lot of this stuff's not even required or they just won't wear it. If you go past a certain set of doors and we'll get you out to the plant sometime, you will see, I don't care if you're mopping the floor, nailing a nail on the wall, or you're actually running the machinery or in the lab, you will wear that same gear. Even in the warehouse, when they're packing a box, those people yeah. look just like you look right now. So yeah. he's not trying yeah. to show off or do anything crazy. I'm just letting you know because we we've heard this so many times. Sure you have. The house, like, I don't know anything different. You know, when I'm in the laboratory, uh, it's a secured area. There's no open stuff, so I can take my mask off. But when I go back out in production, you know, again, I've got to put my mask on when I go into the hallways, even though each of the rooms are sealed themselves. You know, uh, you still have to be completely gowned up, booties on my feet. You know, so everybody from shipping to receiving, you know, we're all wearing booties and hairnets. And yeah, uh, people have commented, you know, when I've done things, 
And this is this is my work. This is what I wear when I when I entered into production, you know, and, and the labs are in production. So this sure. is this is what I wear, you know. Good point, yeah. Brian. Yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure that I, I could see that in your comments at some point. Somebody go, "Why is that guy wearing all that stuff? Who's he trying to look like? What's he trying to be?" Well, <laughs> now you know why. Yeah. And again, I just want to close with saying we we love this industry. This was no way meant to bash it. Just you had some questions you wanted to know, and we're just trying to tell you from our side of this. It's not about making other manufacturers or brands look bad. There's some wonderful. It's just usually a small number that ruin it for everybody because there's just so much profit motive. And it's easy to start playing the games and you know trying to make more money than the next guy. And, and when I said earlier about price is only um, important when there's nothing else to consider, we're just trying to tell you there are other things to consider. And there's a big difference between the best price and the best deal. So, for example, to me, that's getting the best quality you can at a at a fair price. That's a that's a good deal, not just oh, I can give you this protein for three dollars when it, you know in theory it should be fifty. See, yeah. the, that's and what I mean by the deal. Yeah. To consider. And, and and in closing, you know, one of the things that we started um, was try it out. I mean, would you ever go buy a car that you didn't test drive? And in Montana, they used to say you'd never buy a horse that you didn't ride. But everyone I've ever said that to will know, you know, I'm always going to take that car for a test drive. I'm not going to just buy something, take the sales guy's word for it. Well, that's what I incorporated with EFX Sports, where you can go and you can try it out. Because like Brian said, I can, I can have all the research in the world, which I have more than anybody, any single for-profit company has ever done. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean anything. So that's why, you know, all of our products eventually, as we are kind of reintroducing this new branding, you can try everything. Uh, $4.99 doesn't even cover my shipping. My shipping right now is about $10 to ship it to you. So it just covers a little cost. And if you don't like it, We'll refund your $4.99. Basically, I want you to try it before you invest your money. So people should be able to go out there to the brands and say, hey, can I try your product? And if they're not willing to try and they don't have a guarantee, again, be skeptical. Skeptical. Sure. Because I remember years ago before I got in the industry, I mean, I had a cabinet full of products that you'd buy and it didn't work and you'd go buy something else. And and that's what most people do. They'll buy it. It doesn't work today that, you know, everybody takes a return. So they'll use half of it. It doesn't work. Return to Amazon. But test drive it. You know, if you want to really see if EFX Sports works, go and try it. Yeah, I think there's very few, few companies I think that have ever seen actually do that. And also, I think just with you guys, I mean, you're in a supplement industry where it'd be easy for you guys to come out with a. Uh, Trichestrone, or do you guys have these staple products that are, I think, are also very novel too, and one of a kind type of products. So I think it's when there's some added to your lineup, there it's kind of added there, you know, for a reason. And I'm not trying to do a lip service because even for me, I think that's the thing. When you get on social media, there's a zillion supplements to sell with a zillion affiliate links and stuff like that. Uh, I just feel confident too, and I also like that it's USA manufacturer. I still stand by that. I don't know if you guys think it's cool. I think you guys do it, but I think you put it a little bolder, honestly. But I thought it was surprising that you guys were the biggest, again, the only USA produced creatine. I think that's still huge. I still love that because I am still skeptical about powders. And there, are, there are some uh, some young guys with some new creatine brands that claim theirs are made in the USA. And it's kind of funny because, again, you know, uh, we, we've, we've talked about the whole history of uh, creatine. And there are there's nobody. The only place that's being made is China, um, USA, Crealkin, and then Germany is Creapure. That's it in the whole world. There's no other creatine being produced commercially. So, awesome, guys. I'll, I'll put everything down below, all the uh, cool. links and everything. And uh, I think that's it. Unless there's any other final words, I think we're good. Yeah, no, again, I just want to be transparent. If you want to fact check, call us out. I mean, you're more than welcome to. We're, we're, we're up for any criticisms or whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, we just want to help. I mean, we're kind of at a point in our careers where it's time to give back. And we see that like even just giving this information, taking the time today to speak with you is a service to the customer. Even if it helps them buy a different brand's product, as long as it's working for them, they're getting healthier and stronger. Hey, at the end of the day, that's what really matters, right? Not just making us richer. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. We appreciate you. Thank you.